Hey guys, Ed Paulson from Calusa Brewing. I'm super stoked to be talking about and tasting Fooderhead Batch 3, our preeminent exponent of our fooder program in all of its fabulous zesty funkiness. And Fooder Goblin approves and the pink chair abides. You know what's super fascinating is I got to taste this beer a few weeks ago, maybe like a month ago. It was still kind of bottle conditioning and I loved it then and it's already really different than it was then. I'm getting super, super like, like lemon zest and uh, that, you know, I always talk about white pepper, that peppery quality too. I could just sit here and smell it all day and I probably will if you guys don't ever cut. The third batch of this is also a really fascinating way for all of us to taste the way that the cultures continue to change and these beers change and develop in terms of generation. I haven't even tasted it yet and I'm already, I already can't withhold. Have we talked about this before, the complexity and complication and that they often masquerade as each other, but complexity can come across as something really almost simple and likable like this, but every time you take a sip, you taste new flavors. And complication can be that just everything but the kitchen sink, like, wow, it's so complex, but it's not really, it's kind of like a mess. And this stuff is just so expertly constructed. You can imagine the times and the tastes and the purpose of when you would drink this. And I think that that's the best way to explain why it's at the center of our food or fermented program. Like, what is a wild ale? What's the fooder do? What do our house cultures taste like? Look at this head, it's just so pillowy, rocky still. Rocky Five, even. It's like super fruity, but also super dry, with this kind of minerally appetizing character that that kind of, they seem like when they're fruity, they're gonna be sweet, but that's often the neat trick with these beers, is they give you like this light effervescence and this crispness, but they're kind of full from the oak, and they're actually really, really dry and appetizing. The kind of hop character weaves together with the kind of almost like pineapple-y character that we get from our house cultures in the bread. Wow, I knew when we were gonna be doing this this morning, I didn't actually think it was gonna taste this good. So I had certain things I was gonna say and now I'm actually uncharacteristically short on words. The way that the natural carbonation comes across, so all the bottles and all the kegs are all naturally conditioned. There's this really champagne-like effervescence, this real persistent and mousse-like head. Look at even the lace work on the side, what do they call it? Brussels lace, I think that's so beautiful. And what that kind of crackle of natural carbonation does, the aroma just flies out of it the whole time you're drinking it. And so every sip has this appetizing prelude. Fooderhead is really the first beer to come out of our fooder, the best representation of the flexibility and the complexity of our house cultures. And I think that this third version is even more like cohesive and mature. What's fun about them is, as I said, tasting this even like a month ago is really different. So they continue to change, like even in their unique lives, um, as well as just the lives and the generations of the cultures and the fooder. It's always fun when people come into the tap room and they taste these beers and like, what's a wild beer? What's a foetter? Um, and you say, well, it's made in that vessel right there, you know, that wooden hooped vessel you see through the double doors. There's something about next to the steel tanks, you've got like a modern dairy facility and then a gal over there like churning butter. You know, you just have like the rustic uh, and the modern next to each other. And there's no beer that better personifies that than Fooderhead for sure. I mean, even every time you take a sip, it reveals new flavors. It is so fabulously authentic. It tastes like you've literally traveled across, across the Atlantic uh, in a way. Those kinds of flavors are weirdly foreign and at the same time, amazingly homespun. You know, literally it was made right here. My wooden buddy. You know, this beer was made right here, but it tastes like another world. And I think that that's so... That was really stunning and inspiring. 